Hi, I'm Eric Romanishan with the SMIE program, or Stream Monitoring Information Exchange, which is a volunteer-based program that raises awareness of water conservation issues, as well as give a practical hands-on experience for volunteers to evaluate water quality. And we're standing here next to beautiful Jonathan's Creek in Maggie Valley. And I'm going to show you some of the tools we use in the SMIE program to collect the data, process the sample, and record the data. So first we'll look at the kick net, which we use to collect a kick sample. And we use this to collect a sample right out of a riffle. Next, we have a leaf bucket to collect our leaf sample. One of the first tools you need, and probably the most essential, is a good pair of waders and boots. When you're in the water, you're going to be kicking the substrate, and there's always a risk for glass, metal, things that could easily cut your foot if they weren't well protected. It also helps to have a good set of waders. Again, that water can be pretty cold, air temperature can be cold, helps to have something to keep you separated from the elements. So here we have some of the tools we use to help process the sample, which include forceps, hand lenses, because many of the organisms in the nets and samples will be small and hard to see, ice cube trays to help to sort the different taxa into their own uh, separate location, and then spray bottles to help keep the sample wet and the organisms mobile so they can be seen more easily. And it helps to have various other pans to help hold samples, hold larger bugs. When you're out in the field, the toolkit's going to have a number of sheets of paper to help you with the sample. You're going to have a protocol guide to make sure the sample is collected correctly. You're going to have a few tools to help with identification a dichotomous key, picture guides. These are various tools that, again, will help. And the last sheets you'll have are the data sheets, the most critical sheets that are in the kit. Before entering the stream, there are a number of safety precautions that have to be taken. The group leader should be aware of any allergies any of the team members have, such as to poison ivy, to bees, Everyone should be well protected from the sun, wearing sunscreen, hats. Everyone should be well protected from the elements, from the cold, from the heat. When entering the stream, there are a number of hazards potentially on the stream banks, roots, slippery soils, steepness. People should work in a buddy system to take care of entering the stream as well as getting out. When you're in the stream, Everyone should have the appropriate footwear on to protect themselves from glass, metal, other sharp objects, as well as potentially slipping on rocks. No one can breathe underwater, so it's very important to be aware of fast, deep water, slippery rocks, roots that might be sticking out. Carry a walking stick, use the buddy system, use your head when you're taking these samples. The primary method that the SMIE program uses to collect benthic macroinvertebrates is the kick method. Using this kick net, this method requires two people. And the kick method samples an area of 15 square feet. The net itself is three feet wide, and so we're going upstream of the net five feet. Now before entering that 15 square foot area, we must first place the net and the stream bottom. And this may take one, two, even three people to place it correctly. I'm going to stretch the net across what we call the fall wag, or where the main channel of the stream is flowing through. It doesn't have to be too deep, but we also have to take precaution that we're sampling an area that we know was wet constantly that it wasn't dry, say, last week during a drought. Now the net stretch across that thaw wag, and the bottom of the net is weighted down with several rocks. 
to prevent insects from flowing underneath the net. Once those are in place, the net is tilted back just enough so that water is flowing through almost all the net but not going over the net. If it goes over the net, it will carry insects out of the sample. Once the net is in place, the second person will go five feet upstream of the net and begin rigorously kicking the stream bottom. Flipping over rocks, bending down, washing off rocks with the hand, being careful of any glass or metal, of course. And you'll know the sample is being collected correctly if you see dirt and debris flowing downstream into the net. The second person is going to kick the sample for one minute. At the end of that one minute, it'll take two people to remove the net from the stream. The person holding the net will fold it in half and wrap the remaining net around the poles. The second person will remove the rocks, fold the net in half underwater, and then again grab that remaining net and lift it up at the same time so that all the water goes through the net and not out the bottom or out the top. Then one person can take that to the processing station on land. Here we're picking the kick sample. Again, it's two people for 20 minutes. And we're picking every organism that you see and placing them in the ice cube trays where we can sort them and identify them. Here we have a little net spinning caddis fly. We got a flattened scraper mayfly, very fragile. We have a quick crawling predator stonefly. Here we have a vegetated case caddis fly, very neat organism, it makes cases out of plant material. For larger organism, it helps to have an extra tray nearby to put them into because otherwise they'll climb right out of the ice cube tray. The samples tend to dry out when you have them up on a table, so it helps to have a spray bottle to keep the sample moist and the insects will move around so you can more easily see them. Now, many organisms are going to be very large, easy to see. Many organisms are going to be very small. This is a roach shredder stonefly, which is a very intolerant organism. They do get bigger than that. It helps to have a white placemat underneath the net. It makes the insects and other invertebrates stand out. When you're sorting through a sample, you want to make sure that you look through the leaf material, the stick material, the sandy material for organisms that create cases which are sometimes blend right in and you don't even know they're there. If you have any doubt, some that looks like a case, but not sure, stick it in water. If an organism is in there, it'll pop its head out. The second method we use to collect benthic macroinvertebrates is the leaf pack. And this is one person going into the stream in the same area where we collected the kick sample. That person can go upstream or downstream if needed to make sure enough material is collected. That person's going to collect an inch of material in the bottom of the collection tray or for three minutes. Now leaf packs can be hard to find depending on season, but it's key to make sure that the person collecting leaf packs finds leaves that have begun the decay process. New leaves cannot be broken down by insects. It might take one person multiple locations in a stream to find enough material. Once enough material is found, we could take it to the processing station on land. When I'm collecting the leaf pack, notice I made sure that I was collecting material from moving water just like the kick sample. We don't want to collect leaf packs from pool areas 
because there's a different assemblage of insects and vertebrates that live in those. And I also notice how when I was pulling leaf material out of the stream, that I kept the bucket close to make sure as many insects could fall into the bucket as possible rather than back into the stream. It's important to remember when processing the leaf pack sample that you keep it separate from the kick net. When sorting insects, they should be in a separate ice cube tray than the insects from the kick net. But I'll show you an easy way to process the leaf pack sample. For that, you'll need two people and the kick net. You want to open up your net, create a little pocket, and I have some water in the bottom of this bucket with all my material, and I'm stirring it up, breaking apart the leaf material, and then I'm just going to pour the water in through the net. And I recommend filtering that leaf material a couple times, pouring it into the net. Now most of your insects and invertebrates will now be in your kick net and much easier to process. And then at the, towards the end of the 10 minutes, you always want to make sure to still just take a quick visual survey of the leaf material, looking for larger organisms, crayfish, water worms, um, giant shredder stoneflies, organisms like that, that might stick to the leaf material a lot better than the smaller organisms. The final collection method is the visual survey. And that should be done by the person with the most experience with recognizing the different taxa. To do the visual survey, you want to first look at the kick sample, the leaf pack sample, and just kind of gauge, get an idea of what insects have already been collected. The main purpose behind the visual survey is to collect different taxa to get a qualitative assessment of organisms that weren't already collected in the two quantitative methods, the kick sample and the leaf pack sample. So the visual survey will be one person for five minutes and that person will take a collection tray with them, go out into the stream, sample all the different habitats going out there, flipping over rocks, looking in all the different types of habitat, looking for different taxa. In any stream ecosystem, we can see there's a number of different types of habitat. Across the stream, I see an undercut bank with root wads hanging down into the water column. Up close to the shore, I see pools with slow moving water with a lot of sediment instead of the cobble gravel that's out there in the riffle. Upstream, I also see run type habitats. Faster moving rod water, but not like a riffle. Now here's a habitat where you'll want to survey during the qualitative visual survey. And that's a pool area where we see the substrate has changed from gravel and cobble to a lot of sediment. Now there are certain insects they like to bury themselves in here. Be hard to sample, but you can just stick a little bit in your hand, move it around, look for anything that might be moving. Now in the pool areas you also find a lot of leaves. You definitely sort through those. You also find woody debris, large sticks. Definitely pull those out, look for anything sticking to them. Here we have an example of an undercut bank and some of the root wads material that's hanging down from the trees above. And this is great habitat for dragonflies, damselflies, snails, a lot of mayflies. So during the visual survey, you definitely want to look for these undercut banks and root wads. So the qualitative survey, we're going to go look at all those places looking for organisms that we did not collect in the kick net or the leaf pack.